Galatians chapter 3. In verse 1, which says, O foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you or deceived you or forced you into accepting that you should not obey the truth. Now we understand the truth not to be what Paul had taught them, but as in the truth as it exists in the eternal realm, that Christ and Paul knew this by his interaction with them, that they had experienced the truth because they had been declared to by Christ Jesus, which was evidenced in the works that they had done that Paul knew of, so that they had obeyed the essence of the declaration that came to them in the person of Christ Jesus, and that they had known the essence of the New Testament that Paul was about to develop an argument for. Now, just looking at this letter generally, there were issues that existed in the church at Galatia that Paul was addressing. And you find today that many ministries duplicate or attempt to follow Paul in the lessons that he taught in these letters. And the reason why duplicating ministries like to preach the word or duplicate the physical word is because it doesn't threaten the carnal existence of their members or of themselves. For example, Paul's letters threaten the wicked existence of the people in the churches that he wrote to because Paul addressed these very issues that the people were into. But those issues are not the issues of the church today. Therefore, preaching or pseudo-declaring Paul's duplication does not bother anyone today. And Paul addressed the issue from a backdrop of the Hebrew wanting to convert Christ himself. The basic tenets and principles that were dealt with by Paul dealt with the issues from the point of view of scripture that Paul had access to in his lifetime. Paul addressed the false teaching that was rampant in the church at the time because it went contrary to the essence of what Christ taught regarding the New Testament. Paul addressed the issue from a backdrop of the Hebrew wanting to convert even Christ himself, trying to change God's mind from the essence of a system that God had himself created and prepared for men from before the physical creation. What I'm saying is, the only scripture that Paul had on which to base his teachings was what is referred to as the law and the prophets, which we understand to be the basis for the inspiration of all men. Now Paul's teachings in his letters departed from what was suggested in the physical writings of the Hebrew scripture because 
Paul brought to the world a new expression that Christ had revealed to him of works that existed in the eternal realm. So Paul brought to the world a new perspective or he added something to the church that had not been there hitherto. He presented to the world and the church a new viewpoint that the Lord Christ had given Paul in his own person and by his own sacrifice. So you find that a lot of what Paul addressed had to do with people endeavoring to justify themselves by sticking to the letter of the law rather than to the essence that it represented if you were in submission to Jesus Christ which Paul was now I want to make one point very clear this morning I speak not only to those of you who are here but to countless thousands who find it impossible or inconvenient to be here and herein lies the reason for our continued and abated ministry whether or not the world whether or not everyone desires not to receive this word it is going to go into the world regardless generally looking at Paul's letter to the Galatians in chapter 3 and just following Paul's basic trend in the development of the argument it becomes once again clear that Paul is addressing the false teaching that was in the church based on a carnal understanding of what had already been written in the Hebrew word in the Hebrew scripture and the King James Version translators translated the Greek word diatheke as covenant in Galatians chapter 3 I'd like you also to look at Matthew 26 and verse 28 Matthew 26 28 where the translators deemed it necessary to translate the same Greek word that was rendered as covenant in Galatians 3 they deemed it necessary to translate the same Greek word diatheke as testament in the phrase for this is my blood my haima of the new diatheke or the new testament which is correctly rendered in Matthew 26 28 now the question would automatically arise why did they think it necessary to translate diatheke as testament in Matthew 26 and they thought it necessary to translate diatheke as covenant in Galatians chapter 3 that's the question that I would like us to look at for a moment why do I say that diatheke in Galatians 3 cannot be translated as covenant all the hallmarks of the system called the New Testament are present in Galatians 3 only the blind would translate diatheke as covenant in this chapter 
all. Let me put it this way. How can I say that the Ateke in Galatians 3 cannot be translated as covenant? Why do I say that it is incorrect, an incorrect translation to render the Ateke as covenant? Firstly, Strong says, and if you turn to Strong's for a moment, you would see that Strong says the Ateke is to be properly rendered as a disposition. He makes an absolute judgment based on what he knew of the Greek language and he should know because he is universally accepted as an expert on the subject. He says that the Ateke is properly a disposition now, he goes on to say specifically a contract, especially a divisory will. And what I'm saying is that the absolute interpretation by Strong's of the Efeke being a disposition conflicts with the essence of what a contract is or what a covenant is you cannot have a word meaning two things that appear in essence and actually are in opposition to each other you're going to have to choose one or the other and for a quick reference to disprove to disprove that the Efeke can be translated as covenant, I'd ask you to look at the last verse in the section on Galatians 3, captioned the experience of the Galatians, or Galatians 3.18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise of a declaration but it is in fact the reality that God gave the inheritance to Abraham by the declaration in speaking in speaking of this diatheke as producing an inheritance therefore we cannot speak of the Atheke as a covenant because we understand that in a contract or in a covenant you earn the essence of what you receive. It is not given to you as a free gift or as an inheritance. Therefore we would have to discount the essence of the Atheke as being a covenant and insist that it be rendered a disposition. Therefore, the term that should be used in Galatians 3 is disposition or dispensation. Now Webster's 2 says that disposition means a distribution or settlement and a final settlement as a property. Now, this should be sufficient evidence for me to put my argument down, my discussion down, for me to stop analyzing the essence of the Greek words, were it not for the carnal mind. There should be no further need for any more discussion on the matter, were it not for the carnal mind. And since that is what we are fighting, I must continue with the argument that I have just begun to develop. The fact of what is said in Galatians 3.18 and the absolute rendering of the Atheke as disposition should be sufficient evidence 
along with what Webster's two said a disposition is. That should settle it. I am proceeding. The problem is steeped in this reality that the wider church has made such a good case to the carnal mind or should I say the carnal minded and the carnal mind is less offensive even though it means the same thing the wider church has made such a good case to the carnal mind that the carnal mind we will not be satisfied with the explanation of James Strong STD LLD James Strong's analysis should be sufficient but if you have been brainwashed to think in a certain way with the help of the perverse mind the carnal one then it will take some doing to unpersuade the carnal mind the root of the Greek word diatheke should also be of help to us if you would just check with what the Strong's says on this subject I'd like you to verify it with me please Strong says diatheke is from diatith emahi which means to put apart now the reason why I keep going to the the root of the word or to words from which other words are derived is so that we can attain some deeper sense of the essence of the word that we are researching Strong says diatheke is from diat it emahi which means to put apart figuratively to dispose by whichever means and the essence is not how it is done it's all about how the disposition is made just that it is a disposition a disposition and the exact meaning of diatheke is just this it is a disposition where the primary meaning speaks to according to Ipsos to a disposition is about a distribution or arrangement it's about a final settlement as a property or the act of disposing of something the power or freedom to dispose direct or control there is no indication absolutely and whatsoever of any reference to an agreement or to a contract or to anything that pertains to a covenant the primary meaning of disposition speaks to a distribution or an arrangement or a final settlement disposition speaks of a distribution of something which in this case is God's blessings defined as nothing physical God's blessings defined as a taste or the temporary experience of the original spiritual creation as we abide in the physical existence and that this is made possible because we can approach God through Christ since Christ exists eternally in our weaknesses and lack which is the ransom price for our deliverance the only thing that satisfies God is this experience that we have access to through our submission to Jesus Christ this is the only thing that would satisfy God because this results in our entire healing from the condition 
that we naturally find ourselves in and it is only God in Christ Jesus himself who can perform the spiritual works that would satisfy God and we have to note that it is only Christ Jesus who originally walked in the Rima age this is the definition for spiritual works works that were worked before the beginning of the physical creation that ended in our spiritual creation anything other than that is not acceptable to the Father so all our works that we can come up with will fall as long as it is in our own essence and condition will fall short of God's expectation therefore I say it cannot be a contract because it is expected that in a contract or a compact or a covenant that both sides have an obligation and in this sense our obligation is beyond our ability to perform it is impossible for us to perform works that are satisfactory or acceptable to God since the only works that can please him are those which continue to exist eternally in the Rima age therefore since we cannot fulfill any obligation as it concerns our own persons since we cannot fulfill any obligations as we abide in this physical realm then it should become obvious as well that we are not in any covenant relationship with God but that it is a one-sided relationship and everything done is done by Christ and God anything we receive in inheritance is made possible because of the miracle of God existing outside of his glory God's blessings are defined as a taste or the temporary experience of the original spiritual creation this is what God desires to share with us this is what he disposes of as we submit to him and this blessing only happens if we submit to Christ's declaration it is important to note that Christ can declare to us since Christ also exists in our weaknesses in the image and he declares to us the impartation of knowledge of the specific single Rima works that he desires for us to submit to Christ does not reveal himself to us except if it is for the purpose of declaring to us or for the purpose of spiritually connecting us to the Rima works that he declared to us in the first instance in the impartation of knowledge that we had submitted to please also note that Christ will not unveil himself because he wants to show himself off but only to impart spiritual knowledge or to spirit, spiritually connect us Webster says that a secondary meaning of disposition is what God desires or what he wills or what he has an inclination towards as in it is God's disposition that we be not in lust and separated but it is God's disposition that we be blessed and healed Webster's 2 says disposition also means one's usual mood or temperament or habitual tendency or inclination I just need to go one step further 
in this analysis and we need to further investigate the origin of the word diatheke which is from diat et emahi diat et emahi is from the Greek word dia and I'd like you to follow along with me is from the Greek word dia denoting the channel of an act or through and the Greek word tithemi meaning to place properly in a passive or horizontal posture the Greek word diateke comes from diat if emahi and the word diat if emahi is from Dia and Tith Aimi. Therefore, we can also say that Dia F Emahi means through the channel of placing someone in a passive or horizontal posture, in a posture of rest placing in a passive or horizontal posture as in laying down to rest which suggests the act of resting from our lust because of an experience of worship through the spiritual connection because of our submission to the spiritual declaration and this is the ultimate understanding of the word diatheke I cannot underline this sufficiently for you to recognize the essence of what I have just said I can't speak about it sufficiently in order to justify the essence of what the word diatheke intends to mean by interpretation of God himself what I'm saying to you is that the essence of the Greek word diatheke that was translated as covenant in Galatians 3 and as testament in Matthew 26 28 is the fact that this diatheke has within it the essence of our being made to rest now our own specific physical works the works that are restricted to this physical realm can in no way give us an experience of the higher existence we can only attain an experience of the higher existence by our own submission to Jesus Christ I would like you to underline that please the only how we can taste the higher experience or the only how that our lust can be neutralized is because of our submission to Christ Jesus and to Christ Jesus declaration now this reality of us having to submit to Christ declaration was not in the world until Adam fell from grace thereafter all men had need of this declaration that could come to us in the person of Jesus Christ for our deliverance and for our healing and what I am saying to you that if you want to understand the essence of the Greek word diatheke if you want to understand why diatheke is incorrectly rendered as covenant in Galatians 3 you must recognize the essence of the origin of the word from which diatheke came and there is a very strong suggestion in the word diatheke there is a very strong implication because of the root from which the term diatheke comes that there has to be 
and neutralization of our lust that comes as a result of our partaking in this system called the New Testament. Further, that no works in our own capabilities could bring the neutralization of our loss to pass. This is not a reference to any covenant in Galatians 3 because at the heart of the meaning of the term diatheke is the essence of healing which we can only attain because of the disposition of God in sharing to us the temporary experience of healing or the temporary taste of the original spiritual creation which ends in our healing because we interact with God in glory since we are baptized into the person of Jesus Christ are you there? it's very important that we understand that diat is emahi the word from which diatheke comes according to James Strong is from the Greek word dia and tis me through the channel of our being made to rest and what I'm saying to you very urgently and very strongly is that we need to understand that the essence of diatheke includes the understanding according to God's interpretation of our lust being made to rest because of our submission to Jesus Christ. This is the ultimate understanding of the word diatheke. And that when we are in the New Testament or the New Dispensation, we are in God's will which is resting or in the experience of the eternal realm and that our nature has been converted that we experience life through the temporary experience of the original spiritual creation which is the blessing The lexical aids further confirms the essence of the Greek word diatheke which is used in Matthew 26, 28 where Jesus speaks of the blood of the New Testament if you Turn with me to the lexical aids. Where it says, under the caption for the Atheke, Testament or Covenant. In classical Greek it says, however, it always meant the disposition which a per person makes of his property in prospect of death that is his testament this is the meaning when used either in the singular plural the plural also means the testamentary arrangements of a person in essence again the lexical aids has incorrectly inserted covenant as one of the meanings of the ethic and we need to address this what is important is that it says it always meant the disposition which a person makes of his property in prospect of death in the classical Greek it had no other essence 
there was no understanding of a covenant in the classical Greek and it is imputed in this section because of the rendering in the King James or other English translations of Galatians 3 and other passages the lexical aids continues to say it should be understood that the disposition of God becomes an institution of God and the reason for that is because it is always in existence the treasures of heaven are inexhaustible and there are treasures for each of God's sons who exist throughout the history of mankind therefore it becomes an institution because the disposition is not done one and then the property that was shared out becomes exhausted with new ownership this institution of God always continues to exist and that's the reason that it says it should be understood that the disposition of God becomes an institution it is always in existence because the treasures of heaven are inexhaustible in the New Testament or in the Greek writings is the correct rendering of what he's saying it means a solemn disposition institution or appointment of God to man to which our word dispensation answers adequately further down the passage it says the Atheke translated as covenant gives the misleading idea that God came to an agreement with fallen man as if signing a contract rather it involves only the declaration of God's unconditional disposition it's a disposition that is unconditional since we have already been created in the eternal realm by the spiritual works of Christ Jesus in the Rima age there is an inexhaustible resource of treasures that each son will have access to in his lifetime and that's the reason we were created spiritually before the physical creation so that there would be in the real age in the eternal realm a wealth of spiritual blessings or a wealth of spiritual works that we could have access to which would give us the final reality of temporary healing from our lust and the physical condition to solve this passage in the lexical aids just let me underline one thing for you in the final analysis also the lexical aids makes it clear that in the classical Greek the Atheke always meant disposition which fact must color our understanding of the Greek term the Atheke and further going beyond that the lexical aids interpretation of the word the Atheke is that our word dispensation answers adequately that in today's use of the English language dispensation seems to give us the best understanding of the Greek diatheke Webster's 2 says dispensation means the act of dispensing or something dispensed a specific system or arrangement by which something is dispensed or administered also fourthly that a dispensation is an exemption or a release 
from an obligation or rule. In this case, we speak of an exemption from our lust and from the physical condition, which is the condition that we naturally find ourselves in. The New Testament gives us a release or deliverance from being restricted to the physical realm. This is what the arrangement that God prepared before the physical creation, this is what God's arrangement does for us. It gives us a release from being restricted or separated from God. The system that God prepared gives us a release from our lust, deliverance from lust. It gives us a deliverance from the carnal mind, where the obligation that we are released from is our obligation to exist in the carnal existence of the flesh. Since the fall of Adam, we are under an obligation we are under the rule of the flesh or the rule of our lust. We are governed by this fact. We are motivated by this fact of our attempting to fulfill or satisfy our soul by operating to an attempt to fulfill our lust. That's the obligation that we are under and the system that God prepared for us before the physical creation releases us or grants us an exemption from this obligation. We are not released from any obligation when we get into a covenant or a compact or an agreement as a matter of fact more obligations are added to our being when we enter into any covenant the whole purpose of the covenant is to restrict us is to keep us from functioning in a certain way or from functioning in a particular way that God desires for us to function in which we don't have the capacity in our natural condition to function in. But it is not a covenant. The obligation that we are released from is our obligation to exist in the carnal existence. This last explanation of what dispensation is says an exemption or a release from an obligation or rule. The new dispensation or the New Testament gives us an exemption from or release from the rule of the old administration of the law of sin and death. No matter how you look at it and no matter what angle you take, the answer still fits. Whether you choose disposition or dispensation, the result is the same because both disposition and dispensation point to the same issues. No matter how you look at it, Diatheke means dispensation or disposition or testament. Where testament looks at the system from the point of view of an inheritance. That God died in order to relieve us of our penalty for the carnal existence by taking on our weaknesses in the heavenlies. Webster's two explanation of dispensation says 
that it is an exemption or release from an obligation or rule granted by or as if by an authority we are in the system God prepared he is the authority he is the authority who chooses who is to be granted exemption or release from the physical condition Christ has the authority which he had in himself from before he shed his own glory are you still there? Yeah. I'm not in a hurry to finish as I develop the argument for why the Atheke should be rendered as a dispensation, disposition, or testament. I'm not in a hurry to get through this. I have been concentrating up to now the basic thrust of my analysis so far has been to deal with the issue of why the Atheke must be rendered as testament or disposition or dispensation. I haven't entered into the realm of what a covenant is in detail as yet I intend to do that but I haven't got to that stage of the discussion yet one final point on why the Greek word diatheke must be rendered as disposition dispensation or testament and this is one final nail in the coffin of the liars of the wider church which phrase identifies them as the deceivers that they are I have already proven to you that both administrations the old administration of the law of sin and death on one hand and the New Testament on the other entered the world at the same time now the New Testament is God's only will and disposition for his sons referred to as seed in Matthew 13 that God's inheritance or will can never be that we be under the law or the curse of the law Galatians 3.10 it could never be God's will that we attempt to fulfill ourselves and attain a higher level of existence by our own works since at the very beginning of scripture God had already detailed that this would be impossible for Adam and all his successors after the fall God makes it very clear very early on in his expression to men that is physical that it would be impossible for us to fulfill ourselves in our own works and in our own capabilities so it ought to be clear that God's will for us should never be that we would be restricted to the physical realm and therefore have to attempt to satisfy ourselves and attain a higher level of existence by our own works I have proved to you that the two administrations entered the world at the same time and therefore that timing 
could not determine which was the old one and which was the new one that since the old administration did not come into the world before the New Testament that it could not be called old because of that reasoning because it was there before the New Testament in Matthew 26, 28 Jesus speaks of Kahinos diatheke he doesn't say Neos diatheke he says Kahinos diatheke the lexical aid says that Kahinos is new in quality or qualitatively new not new in relation to time if you see the explanation of Neos in the lexical aids it says that Neos is new in relation to time as that which has recently come into existence as in the last one after the other one that was in existence first or before so therefore if Christ had said Neos diatheke then we could refer to the Lord's testament as a second one in existence even if it were in relation to the individual history of a single man but Christ did not say Neos diatheke he said Kahinos diatheke the new and different quality diatheke or the new and different in quality testament and it can be read that or interpreted that way that it is a different quality administration than the one we are ordinarily ruled under but this would be an incorrect interpretation Christ's intention was for us to recognize that in reality this testament or his disposition or his dispensation makes the individual of a new quality that the term kahinos did not refer to the testament to diatheke but rather the kahinos the new in quality referred to the impact that the testament or diatheke had on men I would like to now begin the argument from the point of view of the understanding of the term covenant and all that it entails Webster's 2 says the English word covenant is from the old French word convenir which means to agree and basically what I'm saying is that we do not agree with God in our natural condition which is the condition we exist in in the long run over the length of our lives we are basically in a state of disagreement with our opposition to God over the entire span of our physical existence that God in Christ must persuade us to be otherwise which state we exist in only temporarily persuaded in order for us to be in agreement with Christ Christ must first persuade us by declaring to us what exists in the eternal realm and when we are persuaded to agree with God in Christ we are not the same person Christ has altered our original essence in the physical realm even the process is not complete in other words we have put on the beginning of a new existence having been persuaded it is as if we have become a part of Christ it is this new existence which is not our natural selves that agrees with God 
not our basic long-term existence that is physical. It is this new existence, even if it is just the beginning of the process, it is this new existence that can agree with God. The old man can never agree with God in a covenant. The process of our conversion must begin for us to be in agreement with God. At the single point of conversion and only in the short run. What I'm saying is, if the process of our conversion does not begin, then we would not be in agreement with God. We would stand in our lust, in our flesh, not just opposed to the basic essence of who God is, but we would also stand in opposition in our own will to the basic essence and direction that God would have for us in our own lives. And if the process of our conversion does not begin with the declaration, then we would never be in agreement with God. We would never submit to Christ Jesus. We would not go along with Him. In the long run, all we want to do is to follow our own agenda. The dispensation, disposition or testament in God seeking us out to deliver us. If God were not seeking us out, we would never seek Him. Webster's 2 says covenant is a binding agreement. Please underline that. A binding agreement made by two or more parties or a compact. Now, what this is saying is that once you enter into this agreement and we assume that for the time you take on to sign on the dotted line for a time you made this agreement with God in the covenant if this was so that your nature would automatically change and that you would remain unopposed to God for the duration of your lifetime but this does not happen therefore I say it is not a covenant if we were in a binding contract with Christ once we experienced healing that we would remain healing because if we were not in that heal state then we would have jeopardized the covenant we would have broken the agreement we would have broken the covenant if we were in a binding contract or a covenant with Christ once we experienced justification once we experienced healing we would remain healed and this is actually what false teachers say once saved always saved and it is not true we revert to the physical condition after worship and our experience of God only lasts for milliseconds at a time if it were an agreement then when we reverted to our lust the covenant would be torn up by God because they would again emerge between God and us this opposition or enmity which is a breach of the covenant because a covenant stipulates that two parties are in agreement in a long term contract but the contract that you're in with Christ only lasts milliseconds And what I'm saying to you is that the arrangement that God makes with us, God makes on His own with us without our participation.